Violet here, second generation homeschooling mom of three. I have a seven year old, a five year old, and an infant. Today I wanted to share with you a more in depth look at primary mathematics 2022. So let's get into it. So, this is the math that I'm using for my daughter. She's in second grade, but she's doing third grade math. She started kindergarten Singapore math in preschool essentially and has just continued on uh, at a slightly slightly accelerated pace um, and this has been going really well for her. So I, there are a bunch of different versions of Singapore. If you've been researching into Singapore at all it can be kind of confusing but essentially there's the old primary edition which is the original math that Marshall Cavendish published. Marshall Cavendish is a Singaporean publishing company. So they published the original primary in a format that it could be used in the United States. And then they updated it a couple of times to conform to various math standards in the US. So there's the standards edition, which conforms to some of Cal some California specific standards. And there's, there's the common core edition, which is for the common core math standards. And then Singapore Dimensions is also uses the Singapore math style, but I don't think it's not Marshall Cavendish. It's singaporemath.com. It's a Singapore math people, but based in the US, not the Singaporean publishing company, but it's still the Singapore math style. It's still a really solid math program, but they updated a lot of stuff that needed to be updated from the original primary series. They wrote it themselves, but it was um, updating a lot of stuff that definitely needed to be updated. And then now Marshall Cavendish finally has updated this program fully. And we opted to go with this one for several reasons. One of which is that a lot of the old older programs have for the student, they have a student textbook and a student workbook. This one just has one student book. And that's just so much easier for me to keep track of. And then there are also a few other things that I'll show you that they've added to this that I really, really liked. And so we decided to go with this edition and we've been really, really happy with it. So the student book is entirely in color. And I'm going to show you a student book that my daughter has not done any work in because I usually have her write her name inside it and I don't really want to put that on my channel. But this shows you uh, the flow of each lesson chapter opener tasks, learning and activity, learn together and practice on your own, which I'll show you in the lesson. And then it has it talks about some of the other features, which I'll just show you in the lesson. So we won't spend too much time with that. There's a table of contents for this. So this is the B book. So it's the second half of the year. This is the lesson opener. You and your student are supposed to look at this and talk about it together. And in the teacher manual, it has prompts for things to talk to your students about. So when we get to the teacher manual, I'll show you that. But this is the introduction to kind of get their brain working before you jump into the meat of the lesson. At the beginning of each chapter, they'll have a recall, which is stuff that they should already know. So if they're not solid on any of these things, this little symbol means that there are digital resources online you can go and pull up that will help them refresh these skills if they're struggling with anything on here, because they should be able to do everything on this without help. These are all the like skills that they should already know before they start learning new things. So here it has, if they can check all these boxes, if they did well in this section, then they're ready to move into the new unit. So here's the lesson opener for this lesson. This is has a little problem to do together and then learn where it's explaining what we're gonna be doing in this lesson. These little characters on the side give little hints and tips. So you would work th through this with your student and there's instructions in the teacher's manual for how to do that. There's an activity. A lot of these activities will ask you to do something with your classmates. So my daughter and I just do them together. Sometimes we'll have to go pull other people in the family too if we're like trying to construct data for a graph or whatever. Learn together. These are problems that you are supposed to work through together. This is kind of the, if you've heard of the teaching method, I do, we do, you do. The I do is this part. And then the we do is this part. And then the you do is the next section, the practice on your own part. So ideally, by the time you've, they've gotten to the practice on their own section, they can do these problems without much assistance from you. Obviously, sometimes my daughter will still have questions, but the goal is for her to mostly do these on, the, on her own. And then this think problem is a, just a problem that is a little bit trickier, uh, that requires a little bit more mathematical reasoning or mathematical thinking versus just strictly doing what they've shown her how to do in the lesson. So that's how all of these lessons are set up. All right, so at the end they have this performance task, which is usually a longer, more involved problem. You can see these little boxes will let your kids know, hey, this problem is gonna be a little bit more involved, which is good. My daughter gets frustrated sometimes and I remind her, oh, look, this problem is, you need to draw it out in order to do this. You need to, some of them are ones where you kind of have to guess and check 
or you might have to try a bunch of different things and those help remind her that it's okay that's what she's supposed to be doing she's supposed to be trying things and having them not work out and then trying to figure it out they have these steam projects which my daughter always loves doing they're usually some sort of mathematical art project so this one they're designing using geometry to do a map i have an example of what my daughter did i think she did this last year but it was a rounding unit so they gave her the heights of all of these towers she had to round them to the nearest 10 and then she had to scale them to make her own little chart essentially so she, and then order them in height order so she enjoyed that it was one lesson and it was fun for her she's she likes doing art projects and stuff like that and then at the end of each chapter they have this chapter practice I use this as the test for my daughter I have her do it completely on her own with no help from me and that helps me gauge where she's at there is a separate test or assessment book that you can buy to go along with this program. I don't, I just use these chapter practices. And for now that has been working really well for us. And then after the chapter practice, there's a solve heuristics, which is essentially teaching your child step-by-step -step problem solving strategies to help them solve more complicated problems. So those are really helpful. So I'll just quickly flip through the rest of this book for you. This one's very geometry focused. Um, in the first half of three, they do they review addition and subtraction, and they do some multiplication. And then at the back here, they have all these terms that they've learned. If you do a math notebook, those could be good things to add. We don't. We just, just use this book. All right, so here's the Home Instructor's Guide. There's also a Teacher's Guide. The Home Instructor's Guide is written to the homeschooling parent, and it is all in black and white, so it costs less than the Teacher's Guide. If you're interested in the teacher's guide, Sarah at Homespun Childhood has a really thorough flip through of it. I can link it in the description box below. But I decided to go with the home instructor's guide. That seemed like it would be the most useful for me. So every chapter has a chapter overview that tells you what you're going to be teaching in that chapter, what your child is going to be learning. And it also has a materials list. It has a chapter at a glance and a suggested pacing. We don't always follow this pacing. My daughter sometimes wants to move more quickly and combine lessons, and sometimes she wants to slow down a bit, just depending upon what we're working on. And we also don't do this chapter test. So here is your guide to how to deal with that chapter opener, how to teach it to your student, questions to ask, some suggested answers. Additional support, this has some suggestions of ways to connect this things in this unit to real life situations. Recall has some suggestions for teaching that section. I usually just try to have my daughter do that and then if she has any issues, we'll go back. And so I don't usually use much of this. There's some teaching tips, digging deeper if your child would like to explore something more. They have some game suggestions here. And then they talk about what each of the questions in the recall section is testing so that if your child does struggle with something, you know what specifically you need to reteach to them. And then it has the answers over here. So like I said before, there are online resources that you can use to reteach. And if you purchase the either te the teacher guide or the home instructor guide new from one of the authorized retailers, you get a code that lets you access all of that online stuff. And I'll show you some more of the things that are in the online section in just a minute. But you, the two, I believe there's only two authorized retailers right now and it's Rainbow Resource and then also SingaporeMath.com. And I'll link both of them in the description box. So here's the way the main part of the lesson is set up. It has your learning objectives, math vocabulary, any materials you'll need. It has talks about how to teach the lesson opener, which is that sort of picture that you guys discussed before getting into the, the learning part, it has a focus question that you can use, some teaching tips, and then it talks about how to teach the learn section, and every section you can see has tons of questions that you can ask your student with suggested answers. I don't necessarily do all of these, but I do kind of skim it, maybe pick out some things that might be helpful to my daughter. This has instructions for the activity, instructions for the learn together, again with qu guiding questions, has the answers, another digging deeper, additional support for ideas of things you can do. Um, and this references the teacher's resources, which are online. There are in the back of this book, I believe, pictures, very tiny pictures of all of them. Yes. <laughs> so this shows you all the teacher's resources you should be able to access in the digital resources with the, with the digital resources code from this.
And then practice on your own. It tells you what each question is assessing and then what the think question is assessing as well. And here's the answers. This lesson debrief is kind of something to discuss once the lesson, uh, the learn together section is done to make sure your child's ready to move on to the next stage. You can see this one doesn't have a game. This lesson does not have a game suggestion. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. This next exercise or this next section is more exercises you can do. Reteach is an online resource and this, these extension problems are online resources. So the extension problems, I do have my daughter do and they look like, oh, that's the wrong side. They look like this. They're just questions that are at a slightly higher level. They require a little bit more mathematical thinking than the questions in the book. So sometimes my daughter will need a little bit more scaffolding to complete these questions, and I am totally fine with that. I think they're really good for her. They really stretch her um, in, a, in a way that's really helping her work to a level of success. So I've been really pleased with that. There are also two other books that you can purchase to go along with this, Additional Practice and Mastery and Beyond. Additional Practice is problems that are at the same level as the problems in the student book. So every time they, every lesson you'll have additional practice problems you could do if your child needs more practice than what's already in the student book. Mastery and Beyond you'll see is not scheduled here and that's because Mastery and Beyond is a more spiral book. So after every few lessons, there'll be a Mastery and Beyond section that you can do that kind of has your child remember everything they've learned in the last few lessons and apply it all at once and kind of synthesize it to do the problems in the Master and Beyond. I have not felt the need to do the Master and Beyond book either. My daughter, just with those, the problems in the student book and the extension problems, that has been enough for her and she hasn't had any retention issues because the way that the Singapore math program works is each unit is a mastery unit where you learn something and then you don't necessarily revisit that topic the same way in that year, but math builds on itself. And each year you come back and revisit things you learned the year before. So for example, if she hadn't really solidified her grasp of addition, the first time we went through it, that would have been apparent that when we came back and did more complicated addition the second time and she didn't have any issues. So this has been working really, really well for her. You'll notice that every lesson has a lot of materials and that's because the Singapore method is really characterized by this idea that you do something concretely, so with math manipulatives, and then you move in the student book to doing it pictorially, so with pictures of things at the very basic level, like for example, in the kindergarten program, you would count with math cubes. We have these math cubes here. So you'd count with these math cubes and you'd do it with your hands and you'd show the student what to do. And then in the book, there would be pictures of these math cubes and you'd have to use the picture and you can't manipulate the picture in the same way, but you can still see it. And then from there, you move on to the abstract, which is just the numbers of five plus two instead of using the blocks or seeing the pictures of the blocks of five plus two. And they continue that concrete pictorial abstract up through all their levels. That's the whole Singapore thing. Um, so there definitely are manipulatives you need. And these teacher resources at the end, a lot of them are paper manipulatives that you can print out um, to help you with the lessons. So at the, there's also instructions for the STEAM projects, for the chapter practice, for that um, performance task, they give you a scoring rubric. And then this one does not have, a, this last lesson doesn't have a heuristics it looks like, but they also give you instructions for how to do that. At the end of every chapter, this is only in the teacher books. You would have to photocopy this for your student, which this is a little bit larger than a standard size sheet of paper. So I haven't really done this with my daughter, but if you did want to bring more of this self-reflection and mindfulness into your math program, they have these pages for you that you can do, which is helpful. What they do have in the student book, which I don't know if I showed you earlier, is at the end of every chapter, they have, after the performance task, but before the chapter practice, they have this, how did I do? Which is a more simplified version of that, um, of that sheet where you, I, the teacher would check off this and then write something. But I go through this with my daughter and use it essentially the way that sheet is intended to be used, where I ask her, how did, how did she think she did? Did she think she got all of these checks, all of these checks? She's usually up here. Um, and then I'll write a little bit about how she's doing good work down here and she can choose a sticker and that's fun. So. You do need manipulatives for this program. You do not need a ton. 
the ones that I really recommend having are some sort of counters. I got these when my oldest was in actually preschool. There's 10 of each color and there's a hundred in a set. And we now have two sets because my son loves building with them and he's obsessed with number blocks. So he plays different various number block scenarios with these. So we have a ton of these, but you just need some kind of counters. I got these because they're the exact ones pictured in the kindergarten sing the edition of King of the Kindergarten Singapore that we were using. Um, but you don't necessarily need these. You can use whatever counters you have at home. So we also use an egg carton and dried beans a lot. But the mathematical pieces that I really think you need are this base 10 set. So when you start doing subtraction, it's so, so helpful for a child to be able to see that if they have a 10 and they're trying to subtract something, for example, if they were trying to subtract seven from this, they would take four away and then they would need to break this 10 into smaller blocks in order to keep subtracting. And that's just a really, really, really visual way to see what carrying is essentially. Um, so this one, the space 10 set that I have has the thousand cube, then these are sheets of 100, six of 10, and then ones, and we have tons of these ones. So you also could just use those as counters. With an egg carton, I, in Singapore, eggs come in packs of 10, so they just recommend using a straight egg carton. Obviously, we had to cut two eggs off of our egg carton. The other thing that I think is really, really helpful to have, although I guess you could make this yourself, is this geared clock. It's just so much easier to do the time telling lessons with this clock that they can play with. And you don't need a big one. You see this little one. I think this was like, I don't know, $2 or something. So that was definitely worth it for me. The base 10 set and the clock are the only manipulatives that I really feel like they're so helpful to go out and purchase. But this year I also got for my daughter for more hands-on review, I got this wrap up set. And so what these are, I'll show you this one, is it's just, a more um, hands-on way to do essentially flashcards for math facts. So for each one, you start your string here and you do three, since this is the plus one, it'll be three plus one, and you wrap it here. And you just connect each math, each um, number with its answer. And then on the back, it has lines where you can see if you did it correctly, they should all match up. So she can do one of these keys herself and then she can check it and it doesn't take her very long and it's a little bit it's reinforcing all of those skills that we learned in Singapore math and then we also did Kate Snow's math facts that stick series um, and then this is just reinforcement every day so she'll do a math lesson and then she'll do one one they call these keys I guess because they kind of look like keys but one, one key so each of these things goes up to 10 so this is addition up to 10 this is multiplication up to 10 subtraction up to 10 and then division up to 10. They're all set up the same way, so I'm not gonna unwrap all of them for you. So you don't necessarily need these, but I do think they're really helpful for reviewing all of those math facts. And they're a little bit more fun than flashcards. She doesn't ever complain about doing them. So that's really nice. So I hope you found that helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. I will link everything in the description box below. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you click on a link and make a purchase, I do receive a small commission. Thank you for watching.